Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let's stand and let's worship the Lord. Let's welcome His presence in the house this evening. Thank you, Jesus. We worship you, God. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. It's good to see you in the house of the Lord tonight. Amen. Believe in the Lord for great things tonight in Jesus' name. If you have an unspoken request by the uplifting of your hand, God sees every need. In Jesus' name, praise God. Church, let's remember to pray for Sister Short. I went and visited her in the hospital yesterday at Cleveland uh, University Hospital. And if many of you probably don't know, she had a spill Friday. She fell and she broke a bone in her neck. And it's not life-threatening or uh, she's not going to lose her uh, legs or her, the, the use of her body at all. It's going gonna, it's gonna to heal. But she did take a pretty bad spill, and uh, she's pretty banged up. But I want to thank the Lord for what God has done in her life. When I was up there yesterday, uh, they were thinking that she had a stroke, and she was having problems swallowing. She was having problems with her speech. And I got a text today from her daughter stating that she did not have a stroke and that her speech is, in, is, is improving greatly and she's able to swallow. And so we want to thank the Lord for that in Jesus' name. I know many of you have been praying. Praise God. We serve a healer tonight. Praise God. I want to thank the Lord for what I know that the Lord had his hand upon her Someone at her age, uh, she, she should have been uh, a, a lot more worse, but God had his hand upon her, and we're so thankful for that in Jesus' name. I wonder if one more time we could clap our hands to the Lord. Let's enter into worship tonight. Come on, let's enter into worship. We worship you, Jesus, tonight. We thank you, Jesus, tonight. In Jesus' name. Praise God. Fill this house, Lord, with your presence, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. And the splendor of the King He's clothed in majesty. Let all the earth rejoice. Let all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light. And darkness tries to hide. And trembles at his voice and trembles at his voice how great is our God sing with me how great is our God and all will see how great how great is our God And how great is our God. Sing with me how great is our God. And all will see how great, how great is our God. And age to age. He stands, and time is in his hands, beginning and the end, beginning and the end. And the Lord our God he is one, and beside him there is none. 
There's a lion and the lamb, the lion and the lamb. How great is our God. Sing with me. How great is our God. And all will see how great, how great is our God. And time is in his hands, beginning and the end, beginning and the end. The Lord our God is one, and beside him there is none. He's a lion and a lamb, the lion. Church, let's sing it together tonight. Let's all lift up our hands and sing it to Jesus tonight. How great, How great thou art, Jesus. You're great and greatly to be praised. How great thou art. Amen. Just for the next few moments, why don't we come up to the altar and worship the Lord?
as we sing this song tonight. Let's us worship God just for a few moments, church. Let's come and let's worship the Lord. To thee. How great thou art. Yes, Lord. How great oh, you're great, thou Jesus. Savior God to thee how great thou art oh how great thou art how great thou art oh let's sing it one more time one more time and then sings my song oh my Savior God. Amen. Praise God. You can make your way back to your seats tonight. Thank you, church, for responding to the Spirit of God tonight. Hallelujah. You can be seated when you make your way back. I want to thank the, the Lord and thank the church for such a tremendous outpouring of the Holy Ghost and response this past Sunday to the Spirit of God. What a great service we had this past Sunday, and I think we ought to thank the Lord for what He has done. He has done great things. Hallelujah. Praise God. I want to thank you, church, for your response to, to our outpouring service. Thank you, those that brought guests and visitors. Um, I know we had... I was told five people received the Holy Ghost Sunday, and um, amen, I was, hallelujah, I was looking at the visitor cards that I got, and um, they, they wrote on the cards that they are interested in church, and interested in getting involved, and interested in a Bible study, and interested in this and that, and, and that's the point of evangelism, we want to get them the, the Holy Ghost, but also get them to come back. And we are doing everything we can to do that. And I believe the Lord is going to help us. I want to give a shout out to the church again. I was on my way to take Brother Godwin to the airport. Um, unfortunately, I had to miss the second wave of the Holy Ghost Sunday. But um, I had to get Brother Godwin to the airport. And uh, he was very, very complimentary of our church. And he, he told me, he said, Pastor, there's some churches that I go to of... 2,000 people and preach to him. He said, your leaders in congregation, they pray around the altars second to none. And I want to thank this church for being a praying church. I want to thank the leaders of this church for their response and their faithfulness. And um, I'm so glad to belong to a church where men know how to pray and men are leaders in worship, and we also have some amazing ladies that know how to pray and worship as well. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. Praise God. One prayer request that I forgot to mention pre-service is um, we, we, need, we need to pray for Sister Angela Aldridge's father, Joe, who had emergency surgery, um, 
and I don't know all the details exactly, so I don't want to misspeak, but I know he is out of surgery and doing better, and we are praying for him. I know there's many of you that are praying for him, but let's keep them in prayer, and let's, let's ask the Lord to use this as a great testimony to draw him to a relationship with Jesus. And I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that more than they want their dad to be healed, they want their dad to be saved and receive the Holy Ghost. Amen. Let's all stand here tonight if you have your offering and your tithes. Church, we want to remember, while I have your attention, we want to remember VBS coming up um, the 27th, 28th, and 29th. We are planning. There's so many of you that have volunteered your time uh, the decor is going to be amazing. The lessons every day are going to be amazing. Please, if you are here today, register your child. If you're watching online, please get your child registered as soon as possible so we know all that's coming. We want no child left out. Amen. It's going to be an amazing three days of them uh, getting involved and um, being taught the precious Word of God and also having a great time and making memories. And then that Sunday, Brother Kevin Merriman was going to be with us. And we remember him last year. He was just a, an amazing children's evangelist. And uh, he's going to be back with us. And church, we are lucky to have him. He's one of the greatest children's evangelists in the world. And so we're so thankful to have him back with us that Sunday to conclude VBS. Hey, there's no greater place to have your child at than in the house of God and involved in what's going on in the house of God. Amen. So if you have any, if you have any visitors or neighbors that would like to come, they have children, hey, invite them out to our church's VBS. Everything is free, and they'll have a great time, and they might just get the Holy Ghost and win the whole family in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's ask the Lord's blessing upon this offering. God, in the name of Jesus... We thank you, Lord, for this opportunity, God, to give unto you. God, I pray, Lord, that you would, would bless us, Lord, and bless these faithful people, God, that are here tonight. Bless them, God, and open up the window of heaven and pour out upon them, God, what they need, God. And you know what we need, Jesus. And we thank you, Lord, for it in Jesus' name. And everybody said, in Jesus' name, amen. You can be seated once you have given tonight. God bless you for being here. If you have your Bibles, we're going to be turning to Judges chapter 5. Judges chapter 5, verse 1. Amen. While you're turning there, we don't have a special speaker this Sunday, and we don't have a special service per se, and there's not a special event like an outpouring service scheduled for this Sunday, but that doesn't mean we can't invite someone to the house of God. Amen. Amen. God can do great things this coming up Sunday. I believe he's going to in Jesus' name, and um, I'm so thankful for what God is doing. Judges chapter 5, verse 1, when you're there, say Amen. Then sang Deborah and Barak, the son of Abinadom, on that day, saying, Praise ye the Lord for the avenging of Israel. When the people willingly, everyone say willingly, when the people willingly offered themselves. Notice no weapons. No resources, no army. It was just the human will. Just the human will. When the people willingly offered themselves, the Lord avenged Israel. I want to talk to you on this subject tonight. What is the master of your heart? What is the master of your heart? Amen. All of us, I know tonight, are going to say Jesus is the master of our heart, but we're going to go a little bit deeper than just de Jesus being the master of our heart and get a little, bit, a little practical tonight 
on, on this subject we're going to talk about tonight. But let's ask the Lord's blessing upon his word in Jesus' name. God, we thank you, Jesus. I pray, God, that you bless this word tonight. God, this teaching, this preaching, God, whatever you decide to do here today, I pray that it would, would be absorbed into our spirits and our hearts, God, tonight. I pray, God, that the word of the Lord would go forth and not return void in Jesus' name. And everybody said, in Jesus' name, Jesus. amen. Before we're seated, would you shake hands with somebody sitting around you? Tell them, God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> Praise God. <clears throat> We are emotional creatures. We are emotional creatures. We function more through our feelings than we do anything else. I'm going somewhere with this teaching tonight. I hope everyone does their best to follow pastor because I really want to help somebody get through um, trials in your life that maybe you're facing today or going to face today or going to face in the future. We are emotional people. And a lot of the times in our world, and that includes our relationship with God, we operate, we function, we move, we react through feelings the reason why most of us don't say amen or hallelujah in a service is because of feelings. And because we rely more on our feelings, truth has nothing to do with it. Facts have nothing to do with it. If we feel like it, we say yes. If we don't feel like it, we just sit there and stare. If we are not careful, nothing will matter because we are governed more by our feelings than we are facts or truths. There is nothing wrong with emotions and extremely boisterous responses. But hear me, church, we must make sure that our emotional declarations and demonstrations flow from more than just our feelings. I want to say that again here today. We must make sure that our emotional declarations and demonstrations flow from more than just feelings. They must flow from a greater source than just our feelings. They must grow, they must flow from a greater source than just emotion. They must flow from the fact that I believe that what I'm saying is doing is true. And because I am so convinced of the things of God, then my emotions join me. It's not that I'm responding because I'm emotional about what I'm feeling or doing or going through or saying or receiving. I'm responding because I'm so convinced at what I'm hearing by the preacher or experiencing from God. I'm so convinced of that <coughs> that I'm responding accordingly. And then my emotions join me. Amen. But I don't, need, I don't need emotion to respond to God. If we ever find ourselves responding to God solely on emotion, then that tells us where our depthness is in our walk with God. Are we ankle deep, knee deep, waist deep, or are we completely under the water? I think sometimes we really need to understand that truth trumps emotion every single time. And it has to be like that, church. Truth must 
trump emotion every time because there will come a time in your life if you have not experienced it yet that God will dry up your river. I should have got some really good amens except for one right right there. God is going to dry up your river every once in a while. And it's not to, to, to hurt you, it's not to kill you, it's not to make you feel bad, and it's not to make you suffer. But sometimes God has to dry up your river so he can expose some things that are buried underneath the sediment of your life. And it's in those times that we have to understand that I'm not feeling God. I'm not, my emotions, I don't, you know, David said, I am so full of the zeal of the Lord. Listen, there's going to come some time in your life where you're not going to feel the zeal of the Lord. But my, my response to God is not based on emotion. It's based on truth. It's based on facts. He's not worthy of my praise because I'm on the mountaintop. He's worthy of my praise because he's my God and that's who he is. And that's our relationship. And so because of that, no matter season that I'm in, I can still worship because the facts are saying that God is worthy of our praise. Somebody say amen. He's worthy of my faithfulness. It's not just about worship. He's worthy of my service. He's worthy of my, my faithfulness and everything because of facts. Everyone say facts. One writer says it like this. Watch this. He says, I will make a joyful noise unto the Lord. He said, I will serve the Lord with gladness. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. It doesn't have anything to do with what we are feeling like that day. It has to do with my will. It's my, I have purposed in my life that this is the lifestyle that I'm going to have towards God. Nothing to do with feelings. I will serve the Lord with gladness. All you have to do is ask yourself the question, is he worthy? Amen. Because church, if we operate solely on the aspects of feelings, watch this today, church, it will always lead to selfishness. If we solely serve God out of feelings, it will always lead to selfishness. Well, they're not singing the right song that I want them to sing. They're not, the, you know, it's, it's not, it's, 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 the speed of the song is, is too fast. It's too slow. It's too hot. It's too cold. He's, he's preaching too hard. He's preaching too soft. And all of a sudden, the church has to do everything it can do not to operate out of the will of God, but to make the selfish saints happy. Now, I'm here to tell you that that's not the type of church that God wants. He wants a church that says, you know what, I'm in it not to make me happy, make me happy, make me sad. I'll still be there and doing what God has called me to do because I will bless the Lord. I will enter his gates of thanksgiving. I will do what God has called me to do. Exodus chapter 15, verse 26, it says, if you will, there's that word again. Everyone shout will. If you will diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord your God and will do that which is right in the sight, in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments and keep his statutes, then the Lord says, I will put none of these diseases upon you which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. Amen. Sometimes he just needs to ask, sometimes we just need to ask ourselves the question, did God say it? Did God say it? If God said it, then it's going to be right. It's going to be right and it's going to happen. I heard a preacher say one time, I did not come up with this, but this preacher said it one time, maybe some of you said it. They said, God cannot lie. God cannot lie, and it's the reason he cannot lie, because whatever he says has to be, it has to become true. 
Amen. So whatever he says has to come to pass. And so if God said it, it's going to be right, church. And that's why you need to point out a promise in the Bible that you need and say, okay, now God, do what you said you could do, and I'm going to believe what you said, and I'm not moving until that comes to pass in my life. I will trust you with your promises. Now watch this. I may not have a lot of faith, but I've got a lot of human will. And I will believe God. I will surrender. I will submit to you. I will give you my all because there is power in the human will. Somebody shout, I'm persuaded. I'm persuaded. My mind is made up. I will serve the Lord with gladness. There's power in the human will. The devil is a liar. I want everyone to hear me that's in this room here tonight and everyone listening online because some of y'all said you couldn't be here and you told me you was going to be watching online. The devil's a liar and you are valuable. I want you to receive this here tonight and realize how valuable you are. Because the devil wants to tell you that if the pastor didn't shake my hand today, I must not be valuable. No, you're valuable in spite of who shakes your hand. Number one, you're valuable just on the fact that you are the temple of the Holy Ghost. If you were to puff your chest out, square your shoulders put a smile on your face and walk around so bold and confident because you are a child of God. You are a child of God. You are valuable. You are important. And the devil wants to discourage you and, and, and dilute your confidence and how valuable you actually are. And church, you are so valuable that in a worship service, an entire church by your attitude and actions. You, you mean to tell me that a whole church service can be affected by my attitude and my, my, my actions? Yes. In a good way and a bad way. Your actions, your attitudes in a worship service can can negatively affect the service and it can positively affect the service. That's how important every individual at New Hope Apostolic Church is to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I have seen it growing up in my, my, my young 44 years of walking with God. Of walking with God. I've seen people come in to, to churches somewhere in the north, south, east, and west, and they're dragging a mile of baggage into the church. And guess what? Everybody feels it. You're not, you're not fooling anybody. They feel your negativity. They feel your attitude. And they not only feel it, but they see it all over your face. Don't look at me with that tone of voice. And instead of your, your actions and your attitude um, spontaneously uh, motivating somebody that's been going through so much trial, they link up with your attitude and sit there and nobody's blessed. At the same time, I've seen people backsliders come to a church service that haven't been in church for years, been living like a devil, but made up in their mind that I'm go, I will go to church tonight 
or today or whatever it was and I will worship God and I will get right back with God and I've seen rake sinners walk off the street that had been living like a living like a devil for years but because they decided that moment that they were going to get right with God it just blows the whole church up it is I mean it blows it wrecks the whole service because so one person decided that I'm going to get right with God and I will I'm here to tell you that I, I want to be on the positive side of my worship. I will bless the Lord. And I don't want my attitude or my actions negatively affect somebody coming in contact with God. Hallelujah. I'm here to tell somebody that I notice and you notice and God notices. Come on, somebody. He notices you can't hide your non-worship just like you can't hide your worship. He seeketh such to worship, but he also sees those that don't worship. Come on, somebody. I've come to tell somebody that sometimes you just have to will a blessing into your life. Woo, come on, help me, somebody, on this Wednesday night. I feel like talking to somebody. The devil doesn't want to give it to you. The world's trying to steal it from you. Your flesh is saying you're not important. But I tell you what, sometimes you just have to show up on a Wednesday night church when half the church isn't even here and say, you know what? In spite of it all, I will get my blessing. I will touch God. I will get exactly what I need. I'm going to will myself a blessing. All the odds are against you, but I will bless the Lord. Everything is stacked against me, but I will press to the mark of the prize of the high calling. I will. I will. I will. Somebody shout, I will. I will. You can be seated tonight. Remember when he, was, he went into Simon's house and that woman washed his feet? How many remember that story? That beautiful story of that woman going into Simon's house and, and washing his feet with his tears with that alabaster box who, who people say that know the money and the difference and all that. People smarter than me they said that was worth so much money and he, that alabaster box and she washed his feet with her tears and dried them with her hair and he says, he says watch how he notices this worshiper. He says wherever the gospel is preached. It'll be a memorial unto her. But at the same time, he's also noticing those in the house. Come on, you better be careful if you decide not to worship God. I don't care what your excuse is. He's still worthy of the praise. He said, while this woman's here washing my feet with her, with her tears and drying them with her hair and making memorials for her life, I came in and didn't even offer me a kiss. I came in, you didn't even offer me a hug. I Come on, we've got to be careful when we decide not to worship the Lord because weighing in the balance is either memorial or God noticing that you don't worship. Come on, I want, I, want, I want a memorial made about this, Bubba. I want a memorial. I want God to notice my worship so much that he says wherever the gospels preach, a memorial will be made unto her. God notices. You can be seated this morning. He notices. He notices. The devil wants to make you think you're not valuable to the church. The truth is God notices when we do worship and notices when we don't worship. Somebody shout tonight, my praise is important in the house. Hallelujah. Your praise means something to God. It means something to you. Hallelujah. I, I said it Sunday and I want to say it again because I really feel this in the Holy Ghost right now. Jesus is our, he, he is our source of life. Jesus is our source of life because we come from him. I cannot, I cannot live in the abundant life that, that Jesus wants to me to live disconnected from my source of life. I told you Sunday that, that cattle can't live without the ground because God spoke to the ground. 
Fish can't live disconnected from the sea because God spoke to the sea. Everything that gives cattle life is, is connected to what God spoke to. Everything that gives fish life is connected to what God spoke to. And everything that gives us life is connected to what God spoke to. God didn't speak to the earth and he didn't speak to the sea, but he spoke to himself when he said, let us make man and our image after our likeness. And so God created he, them, man. come on somebody, you've got to stay in the spirit. And how we do that is, God, I worship you. When the praises go up, glory comes down. You want your frown turned into a smile? Get into the presence of Jesus Christ. Because it's then that we stay connected to our source of life. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You, just like a fish can't live without water and a cow can't live without the ground, you can't live without the presence of Jesus Christ. You can't do it. You'll die spiritually every time. You'll die spiritually every time. Hallelujah. 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 Watch this, church. There wasn't anything that made Lot's wife turn around except to her own will. Nothing made her turn around. Except her own will. Your human will is so far superior and more powerful than human emotion. I know we're emotional people. I understand that. Ain't nothing wrong with being emotional. God made us that way. I'm not talking or preaching against being emotional. I'm just talking to somebody here tonight that we can't be mastered by our emotions. <laughs> we can't be mastered by our emotions. King Saul committed a terrible crime against God and then tried blaming it on the people. But God didn't accept that excuse because he knew King Saul's will was to do it anyways. I, I want to bring us back to Sunday school this morning. Can I bring it back to Sunday school this morning? We could hide it from our husbands, our wives, our children, our pastor, our friends, our uh, you name it. We could hide it from everybody. We cannot hide it from God. Come on, somebody. Amen. Man, the Old Testament talks about man sees the outside, but God sees the heart. And here's the thing, we can, we can come up with an excuse for unfaithfulness, an excuse for non-prayer life, an excuse for a non-worship experience, an excuse not to receive the word, an excuse for everything in our life. But what kind of excuse are we going to give Jesus that sees our heart? Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. What kind of excuse are we going to give God who sees our heart? What, I think the truth of the matter is today that there, so many times we, we, we blame it on our emotions and our feelings. Hear me today, church. We blame it, I just don't feel like it. But see, we got to get that attitude out of our heart because the master of my heart is not my feelings. The master of my heart is my will to do right. You see, church, this is what our feelings do to us. Our emotions... And down times try to trip us up and hold us hostage and say, what's the use? Anybody ever have that spirit come across you? And any, any of your walk with God, what's the use? A what's the use voice? A what's the use spirit? We can't let our emotions run our life. We have to let our will hold our emotions in check. Boy, you better get those emotions in check. Girl, you better get those emotions in check. Sometimes we have to check ourselves by the will that God has placed in our life. What, what doth hinder you tonight? Ooh, I feel the Holy Ghost tonight. What, 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 what doth hinder you tonight? Why, why is it that, that, people, that people in the church will start off like an atomic bomb? 
And after they've learned so much about God, have fizzled out to be a firecracker. Come on, somebody. Why is that? Why is that? Why? What doth hinder you? What? What? Come, come on. Come on, King Saul. You've got everything going for you. Not only has, has God placed his anointing upon him, I mean, King Saul's out here prophesying. No matter what you want to think about the guy, I know he ended up bad, but there was a time in his life when he's, he's prophesying. He not only has God's calling upon his life, his anointing, he, 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 the people wanted a king. He has the people's approval. He's headed, he even looks the part. He's head and shoulders above the rest. But listen to me, church. It, it it's always goes back to a heart issue. What's mastering your heart? What is controlling your heart? Is it your emotions for your popularity? Is your emotions because how people treat you? Is it the emotions of, of what you're going through? Or, 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 or ha do you have a made-up mind that in my heart, come hell or high water, I will be in it through the thick and the thin? My God, can I teach you about something here tonight? You can be seated. I want to do some teaching here tonight. Let me tell somebody about the church. Mm, I feel the Holy Ghost here tonight. I, I want to talk about the church because the devil, he's tricking people. And he's deceiving people. And he's calling people, he's causing people to get out of the will of God. And he's causing people to, 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 to walk away from callings. And he's causing people to walk away from what God has wanted to do in their life. And he's even walking, he's even talking people into walking away from a good church. Because of what is or what they think is going on in the church. I want to tell anybody in this place here tonight, and if you're watching online, if you're looking for a perfect church, you're going to live frustrated your whole life. Somebody said, take me back to the old church. Really? That's where you want to go? Well, let's talk about some churches in the Bible if you want to. Because the whole reason most of the epistles are written is because the churches needed correction. We, we look at that on this side of, of Calvary and this side of, of you know, 2,022 years removed from whatever. And we look at it as, you know, this is, this is for us. No, the reason Paul wrote to the Corinthian church is because they were operating in the gifts, but at the same time was perverted. They was laying hands on the sick and people are being healed. Why gossip is running rampant inside the Corinthian church. I'm sorry to tell somebody here. I'm sorry to say this here today. Maybe I shouldn't apologize for it. Maybe I should. Listen, I don't think the church of the 21st century could have lived through the Bible ages. We'd have been too offended by Paul. Oh, come on, somebody. It's the truth anyhow. We'd have been too offended by Paul. We'd have been too offended by Peter and, and Titus and Jude and John and all these people that wrote their scripture. Come on, let's talk. People want to talk about the 21st century church and this and that. Read your Bible. That Bible church was a messed up church. That's why we have the epistles. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And listen, I want to tell somebody here tonight. Maybe not here. I don't know. Maybe somebody listened, but I want to say it here tonight. Don't forget where God brought you from. You want to talk about, well, this person's saying this and this is person saying that. Maybe they're not where you are right now. Maybe we ought to give them some grace. Maybe we ought to give them a chance to grow in God through the Word of God, and we'll get there eventually. Oh, we want to cut everybody off, and we want to say this, and we want to say that. Listen, I'm so thankful for a church that believed in this pastor. I've been here three years. I didn't know it all when I got here, and I still don't know it all. And guess what? No pastor knows it all. But I tell you what, I'm God's man, and I'm here for the thick, and I'm here for the thin, and we're going to have revival, and God's going to be with us, and I feel the same way about you. I feel the same way about you. 
None of us know it all. None of us have it all together. And some of us are up here and some of us are down here. But we will have revival because that's what God has called us to do. Hallelujah. Are you with pastor this night? Come on, let's clap our hands unto the Lord. Well, people talk at that church. Well, how do you know? You received it. If you received it, you're involved. I got one well and one come on. I don't want to be involved. Then don't receive it. Well, you know, did you hear, did you hear, here, here's the setup line of all setup lines that should tell any mature Christian when to shut the door. Hey, did you hear? Oops. Door shut. Door shut. Hey, did you hear? Hey, did you know? Oops. Door shut. No, I didn't hear and I don't want to hear. Because I don't want to be involved. Go talk to them because that's what the Bible says. Matter of fact, if you have a gift, leave it at the altar. Then go talk to them and make it right. Because I'm not in that mess. And I wasn't there and I didn't hear it. So I don't know why you're talking to me about it. Come on, somebody. Oh, hallelujah. You know, the book of Revelation, Brother Ramon, I think you like that book a little bit. I'm not quite sure, but I think you like the book of Revelation about like this much. Correct me after service if I'm wrong. <laughs> Talks about these frogs. Yes, sir. Now, you, you know, however you want to look at that, let me get back over here because somebody might get offended that the, the camera didn't pick Pastor up. So let me get back here in the middle tonight. You got me stirred up tonight, church. <laughs> Talks about these frogs, you know, that, 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 that John, he starts talking about these frogs and their spirits that's going to be released on the earth. And that's very interesting scripture. I may talk about that one of these days, Lord willing. But you know what? One of the main foods of a frog is, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I should say it like this. You know what one of the, the if, if fishermen in the house you know what like to eat frogs? Fish. You know what the church is likened to? Fish. There needs to be some spiritual bass rise up in the apostolic church today and say when one of these spiritual frogs rises up and tries to cause problem and dissension, boom, not going to let that come into my church. Boom. Not going to let them talk about my pastor. Boom. Not going to let them talk about my brother, my sister. Boom. Not going to let them tear things down that we've worked so hard to raise up. There needs to be some spiritual bass in the apostolic church that refuses to let devil frogs rise up in our church. Come on, fish. Let's rise up with boldness and strength and power and anointing and say, I will have revival. I will master my heart. I got to move along here tonight. Got to move along here tonight. Praise God. Got a little sidetrack tonight. Sorry, church. But I'm stirred up today. I'm stirred up today. We got too many frogs hopping around. And at the same time, we got too many people going, oh, cute. Look at the frogs. Don't touch them. They might give you warts. That's a deception. That's a deception. You're not going to get warts. That's a lie from the pits of hell. Talking to you and talking you into not touching people's bad spirits. I'm not saying you ought to be nasty to anybody. I'm just saying at the same time, you shouldn't let them tear down your church. Well, they're my friend. Well, then be a friend to them and tell them that they're wrong. If they're your true friend, you can tell them that. You'll try. You'll, you'll find out their true intent when you tell them they're doing something wrong. Anybody can stand behind and say, I've got your six, until you look them in the eye and say, you're wrong. 
And if they can say, I am wrong and you're right and I still got your six, that's a friend. That's a friend. You can be seated here tonight. I got to move on. (laughs) Sorry, church. Not sorry. (laughs) Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I want to talk to you today about, about God will not fuss over the human will. He will not do it. God will not fuss over your human will. God is not going to lose sleep, per se. I know what the Bible says, he don't sleep, he neither sleeps nor slumber, but metaphor, okay? God ain't going to lose sleep. God ain't going to worry. God ain't going to fret. He's not going to get nervous over your human will. He will let you do it. Rich young ruler came and said that he wanted eternal life. Jesus told him exactly what to do. Sell everything you got, give it to the poor, and follow me. You know why he said that? You know why he said that to him? Because he saw his heart. Nothing wrong with having stuff. He wasn't saying that he was a sinner because he had riches. He was saying your problem is not your money. Your problem is that your money has your heart. And so to one person, he could say, to one person that's rich, to one person that has money, to one person that's managing their their money, he could say nothing to them about what they have in the bank. But to this man, he had to tell him, sell everything up, give to the poor. Are you with me tonight, church? I'm not so convinced you're convinced about that, but it's the truth. What is a personal conviction about, to me, may not be to you and what's a personal conviction to you may not be to me because it's a heart issue it may not even be in the scripture it may not be in the word of god what is taught in the word of god is not a personal conviction but god may convict me about something that he don't convict you about because it's a heart issue to me and not a heart issue to you and so, and so this man comes to Jesus and says, what do I need to do? I want to be in the group. I want to be popular. I want to follow. He says, I see your heart. I want you to sell everything you got because you don't have your riches. Your riches have you. I want you to sell all of your heart, give it to the poor, and follow me. And you'll have greater treasures than this world could ever produce for you and you could ever imagine in heaven. And you can be a part of this ministry also. But watch this. His human will said, this man's got to be crazy. Watch this, church. The will of God will not chase the rich rich young ruler down and override his decision. If that's what you want to do, God's going to let you do it. Because the will of God will let the will of man walk away. The will of God will let the will of man walk away. God says, whatever your will says, I'll comply with that. That's why we all determine the level of faithfulness in spirituality God does not do that for us. We decide and determine the level of our faithfulness and spirituality. That's why it's not the will of God that any man should perish, but that every man should come to repentance. But guess what? If my will says no, that's fine. It's not my will that you perish, but since it's yours, okay. He's not going to fuss about it. If you're waiting for an atmosphere of a church service or an atmosphere of a church or an event to set the tempo of your life or the level of your spirituality, you have been misinformed. Church, listen to pastor this morning. First of all, church 
is what you as an individual make church to be. Am I as a person going to have drop dead powerful awesome church today or am I going to just go through the motions that's your decision that's your will and the spirit of God can fall all over you but if your will is different from his will he ain't going to fuss over it fine you don't want to respond that's okay I'll go to somebody else that will because I'm looking for somebody that will worship me and if it's not you I'll go to somebody else he don't even have to, he don't, or he don't, or she don't, don't even have to have the Holy Ghost. But if they're worshiping, that's where angelic activity is going to be at. Because he seeketh such to worship him. Church is a fuel station. Church is a, is a, is a refreshing time. Church is is a place that injured people can come and get healed. Church is a college to receive information. Your level of faith is determined when these lights turn off. Man, I feel like I'm talking to the church tonight. Glory to God. Glory to God, Brother Dino. Glory to God. Anybody can have... Anybody can have faith in a prayer line. I want to see your faith out in the parking lot when the lights are turned off. And, 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 the, and the spiritual mother, as they said Friday night, has gone home and you can't get a hold of her. And pastor's on vacation or something or, or whatever. He can't be found or, or whatever. I want to know your faith when you're at home by yourself. And all hell, that's when true faith is demonstrated. <laughs> I could even, man, I wish I had time here tonight because I could even tell you through Scripture that really true faith is always demonstrated when everything is going crazy in my life. Never on the mountaintop, never when things are going great. It's always when I'm in the pit of despair and I've used all the money of my inheritance. It's only then... That the prodigal son says, I will go back to my father's house. <laughs> no angel's wings brushing up against him. No preacher preaching to him. No, no uh, inspiring songs uh, to talk to him and inspire his faith. No, it's pig pen. It's dirt. It's poo. It's... it's it's embarrassment. Let's talk about it tonight. It's embarrassment. It's spent all my father's inheritance. It's, I've made a mockery out of my name. It's more than just the physical things. It's the internal things as well. I've made a mockery of my name. If I, I'm fighting devils, if I go back there, I know my older brother is going to have an opinion about me and, 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 and not knowing what dad's reaction is going to be even though he's on the porch looking for son. I, dad's probably going to be so disappointed in me. So he's not only fighting his 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 his, his elements on the outside he's also fighting the demons on the inside and in total abandonment and in total absolute terrible process he produces faith I will go back to my father's house that's where true faith is demonstrated They talked about it at camp. That woman, nothing left, just enough to get her by. But that's where true faith is demonstrated. <laughs> true faith is not demonstrated, Samson. When you're picking up jawbones of dead donkeys and killing Philistines, that's just gifting. That's your gifting. That's not true faith. That's something you have in your body. That's something you have in your spirit. That's something you have in your life by calling. That's not faith. That's just you acting out 
what God has already done in your life. His true faith wasn't when he was out there conquering, conquering Philistines with, with jawbones. His true, his true faith was demonstrated when his eyes was plucked out and his head shaved and he's in, a, he's in an oxen field. Just like the prodigal son rolled around in poo thinking he lost his anointing. He never lost his anointing. He lost his hair, but he never lost his anointing. That's another sermon right there. Come on, somebody. He may have lost what you thought connected you to God, but there's more to you than meets the eye. Come on, somebody. But true faith is demonstrated when his eyes is plucked out. And his head is shaved. And he's thinking all these thoughts that I've let. I'm a judge of Israel. And I've let everybody down. And I'm in captivity by the enemy. But he says, I will get out of this. And so his faith, church, is demonstrated when he lost it all. Not in a prayer line. Not when, he's acting, not, not when he's acting out in the anointing of God. Not when he's doing what, not when he's, you know, David said, I, I, I felt God so much I could run through a troop and jump over a wall. That's not when his faith was demonstrated. His faith was demonstrated when he was writing Psalms, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. That's when his faith was demonstrated. I will, I will. Can I have five more minutes of your time, church? Five more minutes of your time. I'm I'm touching on a sermon that the Lord has given me, but I'm going to say it again anyways. The, The Bible tells us that Samson found a little boy, and he said, will you lead me to the pillar? And he put his hand on that That pillar. That pillar represented something that was connected to a foundation. It was a source. And he come up, he came up in his, his mind that if I could get to the source, I can tear all this down. Get me to a pillar. And I, I and and I can tear this place down. God, give me strength one more time. <laughs> give me strength one more time. And he pulled it down. And the Bible says that he killed more that moment than he did his whole life because he knew how to demonstrate faith in disastrous situations. That's so much not like us. If it's not you, just let this go over your head. That's so much not like us. If I've got it good, I'm going to give. If, if I've got it good, whatever you need me to do, Pastor. If my feelings, if my emotions are high, man, I'm there. If I'm not offended, I'll take the trash out. If I'm not offended, I'll serve. If I'm not offended, I'll do whatever I need to do. But get my feelings messed up a little bit, shut down. But faith is not demonstrated like that. Faith is demonstrated when you're going through it and you don't have an answer, but you have a mindset that says, I will, in spite of. I wish Samson could have found that pillar when he was on the mountaintop. I wish Samson could have found the source of the problem I wish Samson could have found the source of the issue while he was on the mountaintop and he didn't have to wait till he was in disaster to find it. Because the answer to his problem was not in a jawbone. The answer to his problem was finding the source of my problem. And I want to tell the church here today, you can forgive people You can forgive people, you can forgive people, and you can forgive people, and you can forgive people, and keep on forgiving people, and forgiving people, and forgiving people. But until you find the source of your offense, you're always going to be bitter.
until you find the source to your offense, you're always going to be bitter. Until you find the pillar, until you find the foundation of your problem, you're just going to be fighting this little group of Philistines and this little group of Philistines and this little group and this dispatch and this little platoon and this 501 first. And you're always going to be fighting Philistine army. I forgive you. I forgive you. But until you find the source of the problem, it's only then that you can take the whole body down. And I, I spent three services on issues and, and, and these issues that plague us. You know, the first, man, I feel the Holy Ghost here today. Somewhere along the line, church, if we're going to be delivered from these Philistines, we have to find the source of the problem. And if we don't find the source of the problem, we're always going to be, free. I forget, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Fighting this battle, fighting that battle, fighting that battle. But when you find the source of your fence, you tear down the bitterness. And all of a sudden, instead of having to say I'm sorry 15 times a year, 20 times a year, 30 times a day, you're producing so much joy. I love you too much to be offended. I love you too much to let something come in between us. I, I love you too much. God, I love you too much for anything in an imperfect world to hinder my relationship with you. God, I, I love you too much to let anything come in between me and the will of God. I refuse. I will not backslide. I will never stop praising you. I will always be faithful to the thick. I will because I'm going to master my heart. Not my feelings, not my emotions. I will master my heart. What's mastering your heart tonight, church? What's mastering your heart? I, I, know, I know Jesus. I know Jesus is the easy, but let's go a little bit deeper than that tonight, church. What's mastering your heart tonight? Is it feelings, emotions, attitudes, or is, it a, or is it a will that is so powerful? They that love thy law will live in perfect peace, and nothing shall offend me. I will, I will not be offended. I will not be offended. Let's stand tonight. Hallelujah. Ooh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Can we just worship the Lord tonight, church? Thank you, Jesus. Oh, I love you, Lord. Oh, God, we love this church, God. These are precious people. You're precious people, church. You're precious people. Be proud of yourself. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I will love people. I will be faithful. I will be a worshiper. I will serve in the kingdom. Because the master of my heart is not my emotions. The master of my heart is a will that chooses to serve God. I will serve. As for me in my house, we will serve the Lord. We will serve the Lord. To the Holy Ghost of this place tonight. If you want to come and pray, this altar is open. If you have to leave, you can leave. I'm sorry that I went a little bit over tonight, church, but God's got to get a hold of us. God's got to get a hold of us. God, get a hold of us.